do not in fact actually know what I'm doing here. I don't really have a super solid game plan. Look at that game of thread chicken I just won. Some of these fabrics are definitely proving to be trickier to work with than others. I'm getting a nice array of fabrics here, little hexagons ready to go. Got enough of these to start sewing them down. Like I said, I don't think I'm going through the paper, but who knows? Hello friends and fellow crafters and welcome back to what I hope will be a fun casual little video here where I will be dipping my toes in the waters of English paper piecing. If you're new here, I'm Shannon Makes, traveling seamstress by day, circus artist by night, and as you may or may not imagine, my work brings me all over the world. I'm living out of a suitcase for a large portion of the year, and yet, as a chronic crafter, I'm always trying to bring as many of my hobbies with me as possible. With varying levels of success, please see my Vlogmas series for prime examples of how I try and juggle crafting, traveling, and performing. And actually, it was in the comments of those videos that so, so many of you recommended that I try English paper piecing specifically because of its incredible portability. So I figure here I am in my caravan in the middle of stunning Norway. I'm surrounded by pine trees, rugged mountains, fjords, and a ton of fabric scraps from you, my viewers. Thank you to everyone who answered the call to submit your own scraps for my community patchwork project. So I figured let's just jump right in because I actually have to go to rehearsals in a few minutes here quite quickly and I really want to take this with me and get started on it. Now I have to start this video out with a small confession because a, a main part of English paper piecing is the paper. You're using these paper templates here to wrap your fabric around and it, I guess it kind of helps to hold the shape of the fabric as you sew them together. And originally I was thinking, oh, this is going to be perfect. It's the best opportunity to use up what is at this point my quite extensive collection of scrap paper and cardboard. If you've been on the channel for a while, you do know that I like to recycle and reuse things as much as possible. And this seemed like a great opportunity, but the confession is that in a moment of weakness, I caved in and purchased these. Now this is a pack of 300 of these pre-cut paper templates from Amazon because the thing was that as much as I absolutely loved the idea of using my scrap paper, I just could not, absolutely could not muster up the enthusiasm to actually cut out dozens or potentially even hundreds. I don't actually know how many I'm going to need. I think the smallest pack that I found on Amazon was like 200. So that was a lot of things to cut out. I figured I just knew inevitably they'd end up wonky. They wouldn't be the same size, which means it would probably be a headache to sew together. Plus, you know, I think everyone can relate with the pre travel time crunch. So I caved in, I bought these, and even though it is slightly off brand, I do honestly think I made the right decision. Plus, you know, they are in the end still just paper. They're reusable. And, you know, knowing me, I am going to reuse each one of these within an inch of its life, at which point I can just recycle them. So that is where we're standing with the paper portion. Of English paper piecing. And then for the fabric portion of the project, I have already cut out a bunch of fabric into what I hope are <laughs> approximately the right sized fabric hexagons. And this was purely for the sake of saving space in my suitcase, which is already packed to the gills with, you know, costumes and fabric, crafting supplies, dog food, all of that. But let's just take a second to look at these stunning fabrics. Now you will notice I have chosen to go with Hobbit colors. Again, you know, it's my classic go-to look. I will never tire of a good Hobbit colorway. However, if you are getting tired of me always working with the same colors, don't worry. I do actually have another project here with me on tour. It's the one that's taking up all the space in my luggage at the moment, actually, and it is using a different set of colors. So I will branch out eventually. It's just for this first one. This is like, this is my sewing safety blanket. It's my, you know, my warm up project before we try new colors and new shapes, all that good stuff. 
And then lastly, I've got my travel sewing kit here with hopefully everything I'll need for this project. It's pretty basic, you know, classic needle, thread, seam ripper. Hopefully we won't need that, but you know. And then at the last minute, I threw in a few of these little plastic clips, just figuring they might finally come in handy. I purchased them years ago during a pandemic purchasing streak and then have literally never used them since then. So I am hoping that they might come in handy for this project Threw a few of them in there. And yeah, I figured now it's time to pack all this up, throw it on the backpack, get on the bike, go to rehearsals, and hopefully I'm gonna have a little bit of downtime here and there to show you around the tent and to get started on this. Okay, well I am here, I've arrived. So I think I'm gonna go inside, check out the situation, get started on rehearsals. And as soon as I hit a break where I am not needed, because there are gonna be tons of those, I can guarantee that I'm gonna come outside, park my butt and get started on some sewing. Time to start sewing. And just like that, I basically leapt from one creative process into another, from rehearsing to sewing, trying to wrap my brain around things like figuring out how and where I liked to use the clips to wrap the fabric around the paper template while I basted it in place. And I always find it funny how my brain just puts in so much work and energy up front to find what is the most pleasing or efficient way to do a task. But then once it's found that method, it's happy to just settle in for the long haul and repeat the exact same process over and over. Okay, so well, we've had to relocate briefly to what is honestly probably one of the cutest little changing rooms I've ever had on contract. It is this adorable old-fashioned circus caravan thing, but it's also the only spot on this contract that there's no wind blowing or rehearsal music playing. So that is where we're going to be for this little spiel here because I did want to touch base with you on how I'm kind of approaching this project because in case you haven't gathered this already, I do not in fact actually know what I'm doing here. Not really. I posted about the fact that I wanted to start doing English paper piecing over on Instagram and a lot of you very kindly recommended numerous resources for me, videos, uh, experts, blog posts, all of that. And I highly appreciate it and I recognize it was very much done out of the kindness of your hearts. However, the second confession of this video is that I promptly ignored all of them because I really specifically wanted to go into this project pretty much willfully ignorant of the finer points of English paper piecing. I kind of didn't want somebody to tell me how to do it. I wanted to, you know, just know enough to understand what was English paper piecing just to make sure that I was actually doing the right thing. But beyond that, I was happy to sort of stumble my way throughout the project just uh, learn as I go, which was a technique that worked really well on my crazy quilting patchwork bag. I super enjoyed the freedom that I had for that project, just exploring it completely ignorant of all the official stitches and techniques. And I wanted to replicate that process here. So 
What I did was I went and found one singular blog post, something with, you know, a lot of text, very few images just to give me the general gist, the concept of what is English paper piecing. And I figured if I wanted to know more about it, see if I was missing some amazing technique, I could always go back later and get more information. But after I had kind of already established how I personally like to approach it. However, I do know that this is not something that everybody appreciates. You know, not everybody likes to take such a free form, <laughs> devil may care approach to their crafting, which is fine. We all learn in different ways. So if you are one of those people, if you're looking for a bit more guidance or hand holding on your own crafting journey, may I recommend taking a course from Craftsy who is kindly sponsoring this portion of the video and who has not one, but many classes on English paper piecing from, you know, very beginner level courses to some more advanced patterns and techniques so that, you know, you can learn not only the techniques that I am using here in this video, but also, you know, all the other variations that I'm not going to touch on things that their expert crafters recommend like glue basting or working with curved templates templates. Once you've signed up, you can also explore all of their other hand sewing videos and articles. I personally enjoyed the eight couture stitches for fierce handmade garments because they're not only useful for sewing clothing, but also honestly any sewing project, you know, from bag to beanie. So if you would like to join Craftsy and learn from actual experts, the link is in the description and the first thousand people to click it will get a full year of premium membership for only a dollar and 49 cents. All right, with that being said, it's time to leave the safety of my caravan and go back out into the wind and sun and um, continue sewing some hexagons. So I settled in for what turned out to be a pretty long stitching session, but that's not really surprising. Phil and I are performing two acts in this show, which typically means that we need more time to do things like change costumes, warm up and prepare for each act. So we tend to end up with fewer cues throughout the rest of the show and therefore the rehearsal process than people who are only doing one act but it allowed me to really develop a preferred method for basting the fabric down to the paper templates. And while it might not be exactly what works for you, I will share what I ended up enjoying the most. Look at that game of thread chicken I just won. Boom. Stunning. I found I liked to use two clips to firmly attach the fabric to the template. That turned out it was just enough to hold it in place without being annoying while I started to base the fabric down. I would then work my way around the hexagon, folding down the fabric corners and stitching through each corner twice before moving on to the next one. This left me with all of my fabric corners folded under in the same direction, which, you know, may or may not prove helpful later on. I guess we'll see, but it did look clean and it felt really nice. Then on the last corner, I would just secure it down with a couple knots before cutting the thread and admiring my work. Some of these fabrics are definitely proving to be trickier to work with than others. This one, for example, which I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera, but it is really thick. It is almost like upholstery level thicknesses and the fold of fabric, turn of cloth, turn of cloth. It means that um, I kind of didn't leave myself quite enough seam allowance. It is proving a little bit tricky. My corners are quite bulky and I'm having to do a few more tacks in each corner than in other ones. But I will say that generally speaking, I have been leaving myself quite enough seam allowance, which is good because these are all pre-cut. I can't go back and 
changed the seam allowance on them and uh, it's proving to be more than enough on the thinner fabrics. It's really just the thicker ones that are tricky. But look, I'm getting a nice array of fabrics here, little hexagons ready to go and I can't wait to start sewing them together. But it's probably gonna have to wait because I think I'm gonna be called inside pretty soon here. So I've got a pretty good collection of hexagons here in, you know, a variety of colors. They're all stitched down to their little paper backings. Excuse me, I'm trying to film. When the music cuts out, then the gulls start going. It's like they can never have silence in here. But basically, got enough of these to start sewing them down and I don't really have a super solid game plan. I think I'm just gonna choose the colors that look good next to each other and start sewing them down. Also, part of the problem is I don't fully know what it is I'm gonna be doing with these yet, like what the final project is gonna be. I have an idea in my head, but I kinda of wanna see how they look before I commit to it. So yeah, let's just start sewing these down and wish me luck. My approach to sewing these together was, let's just call it lacking a discernible order or plan. I didn't plan anything out in advance. I just went through the various options and found color combinations that looked nice next to each other, either because they had similar color schemes or sometimes because it was a good contrast. Again, this is a similar approach to what I did in my Hobbit robe and the effect there was delightful. So I kind of tried to replicate it here. The bonus side effect to this approach is that I found it extra portable. It was kind of a quilt as you go approach, even though I think that's actually not strictly what quilt as you go means, but I think you understand what I'm trying to say. It is definitely a bit tricky to tell if I'm going through the paper pieces as I'm sewing. I don't think that I am. I feel like I'd meet more resistance if I was sewing through paper, but I'm not actually sure. And the thing is, not sure at what point I'm going to be able to find out because I don't think I can take this paper out. At least until I've gotten like one hexagon completely surrounded and sewn in by buddy hexagons so i don't know we're gonna find out like i said i don't think i'm going through the paper but who knows So let's clarify what I meant when I said quilt as I go because I'm sure I'm going to cause confusion here. What I mean is I feel like I've seen some very beautiful aesthetic reels on social media of people sewing all of these well-planned formations of hexagons together into repeating patterns and it all looks gorgeous and it's perfect for catchy reels but it's also not what I'm looking for in this specific project. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing 
wrong with this approach and if that's the look that tempts you into trying English paper piecing, you should absolutely go for it. It just doesn't really suit my circumstances at the moment. I kind of like this very piecemeal approach, just kind of randomly picking up a single hexagon and then seeing where it fits best in my ever-growing patchwork constellation. Also, let's take a second to appreciate what happens when I've been stricken by the urge to sew, but I've also left my tripod at the tent. One technique that I've been using and that so far has been having really good results is that for some of the stretchier or thinner or shiftier fabrics, I've been using this really thin cotton fabric to back it and act as a stabilizing layer. Now this is very similar to a technique that I did on my patchwork robe, except there I used iron-on interfacing. And here when I was making my bags and thinking about what I needed to bring with me, I didn't want want to count on the fact that there would be an iron here for me to do that. I mean, let's be honest, wherever there are costumes and a show, there's probably going to be an iron. But if there's one thing that I've learned in my years and years of traveling, it is not to count on things like that, even if they seem like they're super obvious. So I didn't want to need an iron to use some of these fun fabrics. So instead, I just brought this really thin cotton fabric. This actually comes from the thrift haul that I did last autumn, I was, where I got something like 70 yards of fabric for roughly $100. It was wild, really fun video. You can go check that out if you want, but it is kind of fun that I have been able to work through not only your stash, but also my stash for this project. And I have just been basically cutting out hexagons exactly like I did for all the other ones. And then whenever I come across a fabric that is shifty or thin or stretchy, I've been using this as a second layer, a backing layer to just help stabilize it. And I had, for example, one uh, red knit fabric that was incredibly loose weave. And so I just used a layer of this, double it up, and it worked really well. Well, it is now stitched in to the rest of my patchwork fabric. You can't tell that it's just, it, it blends in super well, but it just stabilizes it so that the whole thing doesn't get really wibbly and out of shape. It's really easy to just add a second layer and it's a technique that's been working really well. So if anyone else out there is doing paper piecing with a wide variety of fabrics, highly recommend either interfacing or interlining, you know, using a, a fabric as stabilizer. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And so the rest of the week was just spent grabbing a few minutes here or there wherever I had time and energy to work on the project and it turned out this was the perfect thing to fill all those small little gaps of downtime. Okay, friends, I kind of fell off the filming train for a moment there because as rehearsals progressed, I was needed more and more on stage and my chunks of time for filming and sewing obviously dwindled more and more as did my energy level for setting up cameras and talking to y'all and everything. So I thought, let's just sit down here back in the caravan, nice and cozy. I'm basically done for the moment with this. I can show it to you and we can talk about my thoughts on English paper piecing. Did I like it? Do I love it? Will I be doing more? First of all, let's take a look at where I'm at. I 
have gotten this far and I absolutely love it. I will show you some close-up b-roll shots of it right now and I think it's absolutely stunning. I adore the way that it has come out and even Phil who doesn't normally comment at all on my sewing projects keeps complimenting me on how good it looks. I think it's a combination of the colors and the textures, all the variety that's going on in there and the richness of it. That is honestly in large part thanks to you guys, everybody who submitted fabric for this. Thank you so much. I hope some of you have been able to see your fabric in here. So y'all have got some great taste. Thank you so, so much for this. And you're actually probably, many of you, wondering what this is going to be. Now it is actually, I think, going to be turned into the fabric for a paravent. Room divider, maybe, in English? one of these things. So I found a frame for this, a wooden frame in the garbage. It was just in an alleyway in Montreal last summer, found it while I was walking canal. And you better be sure that I grabbed that frame, hauled it all the way back home. And it has been waiting for me for over a year to do something with. So I thought it would be super fun if I could make those three panels of fabric out of this, the Hobbit colorway, mount it onto there, you know, spruce up the wood, make it look nice and fresh, and then use it as a background in some of my videos. I think it could be stunning. But then also, because as you know, I do have another fabric project planned, I thought I could do one side in the Hobbit colorways, and then on the other side of the divider, I could use all the other fabric you guys sent in, in this other colorway with the new template shape that I got, just have a completely different look for my backdrops. So that is what I'm planning on doing. When it comes to my thoughts on the technique in general, English paper piecing, do I like it? Do I love it? Will I be doing more? Yes, I absolutely adore it. It is so relaxing, methodical. It is the perfect project to bring on contract with me. It was so easy to cut everything out have it all like basically all the supplies fit into this tiny little bag bring it with me to the tent and just sew on it and also this is kind of a key factor it was a really self-contained project it was so easy to just do a couple minutes of work on it here and then if i was needed on stage i could literally just drop everything that i was doing and leave it and then come back to it later you know there are those types of projects that you need dedicated chunks of time to be super focused on. They tend to be really fiddly. Don't get me wrong, I love fiddly projects, but I don't always have the time or the circumstances or the headspace to be working on that type of project. So it was really nice to have something that was really, really self-contained. Like I could just stop, come back to it. If I had only a five minute chunk of time to do something instead of standing around and being on my phone, I could sew some hexagons. It was fantastic. I will say I have already introduced this particular type of crafting to three of my friends and they are all addicted to it. So two of them, you don't really know, they're, they're private friends, but one of them you might know because she also has a YouTube channel. So my dear friend, Christine Vike came to visit me because I am in Norway after all, she is Norwegian. So she came out here, she spent a day out here with me. We filmed a bunch of stuff. We had a little swapping of teaching moments. She tried her hand at English paper piecing. I sent her home with a bunch of templates. So if you are interested in another take on this topic, be sure to go over, subscribe to her channel, keep your eyes out and you can see her interpretation of it. And then also, you know, pop your questions and comments in, you know, down below, off to the side, wherever they are these days, because I do have another project coming out. And so I will try to answer anything that I, you know, didn't maybe touch on in this video. I'll try to get to it in the next video. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave your questions about English paper piecing down in the comment section, and I'll catch you next week where we'll be doing more house renovation. Bye. Good grief. Oh, but can't they